we're back and we're going to talk about fall 2020 test four part four question five and this is a pinnacle rearrangement pinnacle rearrangements are vicinal diols reacting with either sulfuric acid or toluene sulfonic acid and you get a carbonyl this case a ketone 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 and definitely a rearrangement happened here but in truth we get a rearrangement for all products and we're going to proceed with this mechanism it's one of my favorites and it's worth a lot of points so yours will be a pinnacle your question five it will be worth approximately 18 points and we'll have approximately, well, it will have three products. I'll make sure of it. You've got to entertain the idea that some of the products will come from dehydrating this OH and some of the products will come from dehydrating the other OH. So you're gonna need to protonate each one separately. So I'm just gonna redraw that molecule so I can show the protonation of each alcohol separately. Yeah. And the top one, I will protonate the top alcohol. In the bottom one, I'll protonate the bottom one. And we'll use sulfuric acid for both. And acid base, one of our first, well, that's a little lazy. Arrows start at pairs of electrons and end either at an atom or between atoms. Start at a pair of electrons and end at the hydrogen atom, leaving group leaves. And the oxonium ions I need to see. Oxonium number one. We protonate alcohols to make them better leaving groups. That's one thing that they do. And in this one, we protonated the downstairs alcohol to get this one. And we didn't touch the upstairs one. And like I said, we protonated them to make them better leaving groups. Let's make them leave. Yeah, don't like that arrow. Ends at the oxygen atom. Yes, I. some of you are learning to appreciate how finicky I am grading where your arrows start and where they end. Oh, I made a new page, maybe. Oh, interesting. Okay, tell me what happened. I think we went down. That's what I did. <sighs> okay. Start to think I lost all my work there for a second. We have a lovely tertiary carbocation here. And I'm thinking about the first product already. Um, I am. How can I get that first product from that? Hmm, I wonder. Well, don't forget your double bond. And down here, I think I'll be thinking about the second product. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay. Question is, fact, fact, just for purposes of clarity of my mechanism, I really didn't change anything here. I'm just saying, okay, the alcohol is on the left instead of the right, just rotating the molecule like this. It'll appear to the left in one view and to the right on the other. This way I can show the methyl group moving. You look at this product, there's a methyl there, one away from the alkene. Well, there wasn't a methyl there to start with. 
once again, seems to be a theme. Methyl shifts, hydrogen shifts. Started those last tests and they will never end. They happen extensively in biochemistry as well. So like that. That is a super cation. Super cation. Why don't I go ahead and make this into the second product? Uh, my mouse is there. I'm gonna make this into the second product. I'll show it in two steps and then show you how I could have done it in one and get the same credit and save time. You can resonate to make the carbonyl. That's just resonance. There's your carbonyl, still has an H on it, an oxonium. And that's going to become product two. Let's just put numbers inside the rings. And how is that going to become two? Well, you're going to need a base to grab the H. We made a base way back when, right here in our first step, and I, and I never drew it. You don't have to draw it till you need it either. So why don't you just draw it right here? It's the sulfate, hydrogen sulfate ion. You need it to get to product two. There it is. Here it is doing its acid base magic. And that gives product two. All right. Indicate the two major organic products and explain my choice. Well, we'll think about that later. Let's get this mechanism done. Uh, what has to happen, remember, there's rearrangements, this is called the pinnacle rearrangement. You get vicinal diols and a strong acid like sulfuric or toluene sulfonic. You gotta remember that is the recipe for a pinnacle rearrangement. Don't forget to do a rearrangement for every product. What moves to get you from here to this first product? Well, please look carefully at this carbon. There's an H up there. The same carbon has no H and that's why this is a cation. This carbon one away has no H's. This carbon one away has an H. That's your guy. It's gotta move. So this one has a hydrogen shift. Next door. When I said I was going to show you how to save time, I'll do it on this one. We'll go to product one. Oh, don't forget that double bond. Now your cation is here. You don't have to show me the green H. There's a green H right here. You don't have to show it. And that's going to go to product one. You need a base. I'm going to combine the resonance with the acid base. And you're allowed to do that anytime you have a mechanism that has a resonance step and an acid base in either order. You can combine those two reactions and not put any comments down that there's really two things happening because resonance is happening all the time. So the, what does the sulfate ion do? Grabs the H. Now, instead of just putting a lone pair on the oxygen like you did here, resonate it down to make the carbonyl and you're done. Look at that. You saved, you saved yourself from drawing an intermediate like this one. And you have all the information that you portrayed here. Here's the resonance. There's the acid base. Here's the acid base. And then that's resonance as a result of the acid base. And you got product one. How do we get product three? We got to scratch our heads a little bit. It's either from it's either from this cation or this cation doing a different rearrangement. 
So you're going to have to copy one of them after you figure out which one it is. And I think I found it. You don't have to move this bond. You can also move this bond. There's always two choices. You can't move the CO bond. You can't break that. That, that. that just doesn't happen. You either break a CH bond or a CC bond. And if I break that bond, that will make the ring smaller, won't it? That will put a cation on this carbon. All right. It seems to me though, hmm, did I say break that? What's gonna be sticking off is an aldehyde. Maybe it's not this one. Let's talk about this one. I think I like this one better. But you see how the thought process was working. The two, the two choices of rearrangement, you gotta go from the carbon with the OH, pick either of the two groups, the H or the C. Same story here. The carbon with the OH, you can move the methyl, which we did. You can move this, which we're going to do. I'm just going to copy this. And, and a nice way to show me this is exactly the same. I've had students put that exactly the same symbol and then draw something different. Don't do that. If you say it's the same, please draw it the same. You don't have to move the, oh, well, it isn't the same. <laughs> I made a methyl into an H. I'm not moving that methyl. I'm gonna move the other bond, which is right. Let's see, make sure you know that's a carbon right there. And we can move this bond. And what do you get? Don't even look at the product. Draw everything except the bond you broke. Don't even move anything on the page. Everything except the bond you broke. And the bond, you move that bond to there. And the cation is now, look at this carbon it, with the OH, it used to have four bonds. One, two, three, four. It, same carbon has only three. That's a carbo cation and doesn't that look a lot like this product all you have to do is do what we did up here to get product three i will tell you what happens if i did this this other rearrangement here because i skipped a little bit once i realized it was the wrong product i stopped thinking about it but you don't know why I figured out it was the wrong product until we have that discussion. I'm going to use the sulfate ion again to make product number three. And that will be a ketone that has a methyl on it. That's why I knew this, this was not a good idea to move this bond. Because the methyl would still be on the ring, wouldn't it? And I don't see a product with a ring size smaller and methyl on the ring. So that was wrong. Um, let's finish this question and then we'll talk about the other rearrangement because I could have had that product there as well. And I didn't, but it would have been a good product. Now, when you're talking about these products, please don't look at the products at all. Look at the cations that led to the products. The cations formation is the rate determining step because they're so unstable. Which cation is the best? All of the cations with the oxygen attached to the cation are awesome. Oxygen has lone pairs that can resonate with cations. That's much more important than hyperconjugation, much. So I don't even wanna talk about these carbons like here and here, forget about those. That's the reason this reaction happens is to get away from those and get to a cation that can resonate with O here, cation that can resonate with O here, or a cation that can resonate with O here. They're all uh, the secondary, secondary, and secondary. Each one of them is secondary resonating with the O. So I don't even know if 
I get two. They, I think I get a lot of these. But then I look a little more carefully and I realize that not only is this one secondary, it's also allylic. You can't say that about this one. You can't say that about this one. To be allylic, the adjacent carbon must be an alkene carbon. Not true, not true, true. This is your best cation. I would say this question needed a little rewording. Indicate the major, the major organic product. And circle this one. Uh, which one? The one that, the one. The one that, that beautiful cation here, and you gotta explain my choice. This is a secondary C plus resonates with O. Well, that doesn't distinguish it from this one or this one. And is the magic word I need to see allylic and that's why I picked product one because the cation that made product one was the most stable and I'm going to finish off by looking at the, the possible fourth product that wasn't on this test so I'll put a yellow line down here because it could be on a future test you never know and let's just copy this cation here Copy it right here. Hmm. I'll work with it. Can I? I also could have moved instead of the CH bond, the CC bond. Make sure that arrow reaches your carbon. I see a lot of students still with their arrows ending at formal charges. Don't do that. Arrows have to end at either an atom or between atoms. This arrow ends at this atom. This arrow ends between these atoms. When you end between atoms, you make a pi. When you end at an atom, you make a sigma or a lone pair. Okay, this arrow ends at oxygen and puts a lone pair on the oxygen. It's breaking a bond. All right, so what do we get here? This is not gonna give one of our products, but you know, it's a reasonable product. And let's see, draw everything except for the bond that moved. And it moved where? From down here to there, cation now here. This would make an aldehyde, this one. This would have been a legit product, but you know, with our shortened exam times due to COVID, Normally, I just always I, I always ask about every single possible product, but we don't have time. I got to pick and choose. The ring size five on this one as well. Off this adjacent carbon, you have an aldehyde, and that brings to a conclu conclusion our discussion of fall 2020 test four part four question five. Any questions about this part or what is our next and or what is our next segment going to be? Um, I actually have two questions about this, Professor. Sure. Um, for that last one you just did, I just want to make sure I'm looking at, at it correctly. For the bond that you moved, I think, did you redraw it? Um, I copied this cation there and, I and then I... I moved the sigma bond, it used to be CC sigma, now it's CC sigma up here. 
So that's the black line. Oh, I forgot the double bond is what you're saying. Uh, maybe. There's a double bond there. Yeah. And that's the double bond right there. I don't know. That wasn't your question, though, was it? Um, what I'm thinking is the CC, uh, the bond that moved, it doesn't look like it moved. I, I mean, I don't know if I'm looking at this correctly, but it looks like you moved the other bond, the one that's uh, between the methyl and the OH. A methyl OH. There's the methyl. Mm -hmm. I, I moved a... this bond stayed. Oh, oh, oh. No, no. I, your, your confusion is warranted because um, I was wrong. <laughs> Let's do it. I didn't follow my own advice. All right. So thank you. Good eye. All right, let's go slower. Methyl stayed up there. This bond stayed there. This bond stayed there. This bond stayed there. Double bond stayed there. Double bond now moved up to the carbon with the methyl, right? Carbon with the methyl still bonded to a carbon with an OH. That's where she saw my mistake. And I just don't like the way that bond looks. I didn't make it. Still looks pretty bad. That's okay. This bond did not move. Cations here now. This carbon here doesn't have four bonds anymore because that one broke. And our sulfate ion. I'm going to grab the H. Grab H, make pi and the product different. Got the methyl there. Got the C. It's an aldehyde now. And have a double bond there. Just to be sure. Doing uh, num numbering one, two, three, four, five. One bond to two, double bond to three, bond to four, bond to five. Call us A. There we go. Is that a little more clear? Yeah. That's good. All right, so if you saw that product up there, you'd have to do this mechanism, that's all. All right, have an idea for another segment or more questions on this one? I do have one other question. I might have misheard you, but for the second product, um, mm -hmm. the cation, the, the intermediary, yep, right there. I think I heard you call it a super uh, carbocation. Did yeah, I any hear you carbocation that can resonate like this. So this one and this one can also resonate. It has lone pairs here, right? And this one. They're all great carbocations, much better than uh, ones that don't have an oxygen attached. Okay. It's all because of those lone pairs. Resonance is superior to hyperconjugation. So remember, uh, resonance when you were allylic was the same kind of idea, and that added one and a half degrees to your stability. So if you want to look at it that way, a resonating cation add one and a half to the secondary, the two degree sign that you had to start with. And you got like a three and a half degree cation, which is really cool, it's very stable. All right. Mm -hmm. And then what do you want to do next? Um the same one but in part two so the EV. part two had a similar kind of question is what you're saying yeah part four number five so the oh. very very last mechanism in the second version oh the other version oh, let's do that too okay i bet it's a pinnacle <laughs> all <laughs> right so we'll be back and we'll do the uh question five part four from the other section and i'll see you shortly